Zion Lutheran Church of Wilton, Iowa, invite you to worship with them. We are your neighbors and friends in Christ. Morning. morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. What a joy it is to know that our sins are forgiven and we have life eternal in His name. This morning we're using the order of service on page 203, Divine Service 4, with communion. So let us arise for worship. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have regard for the covenant, O Lord. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Do not forget the clamor of your foes. O God, why do you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. Remember Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Have regard for the covenant, O Lord. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Do not forget the clamor of your foes. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father. Your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory. 
Lord God, our heavenly King, to you, O soul begotten, the Father's Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry, where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy. You only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshiped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit, alone our Lord most high. In God the Father's glory, amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you have promised, make us love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the 13th Sunday after Trinity, is from 2 Chronicles, chapter 28. The men of Israel took captive 200,000 of their relatives, women, sons, and daughters. They also took much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there whose name was Obed, and he went out to meet the army that came to Samaria and said to them, Behold, because the Lord, the God of your fathers, was angry with Judah, he gave them into your hand, but you have killed them in a rage that has reached up to heaven. And now you intend to subjugate the people of Judah and Jerusalem, male and female, as your slaves. Have you not sins of your own against the Lord your God? Now hear me and send back the captives from your relatives whom you have taken, for the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Certain chiefs also of the men of Ephraim, Azariah the son of Johanan, uh, Berechiah the son of Messus. Meshulamoth, excuse me, Meshulamoth, Jehezekiah the son of Shalom, and Amasa the son of Hadai, stood up against those who were coming from the war and said to them, You shall not bring the captives in here, for you propose to bring upon us guilt against the Lord, in addition to our present sins and guilt. For our guilt is already great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the assembly. And the men who have been mentioned by name rose and took the captives. And with the spoil, they clothed all who were naked among them. They clothed them, gave them sandals, provided them with food and drink, and anointed them and carrying all the feeble among them on donkeys, they brought them to their kinsfolk at Jericho, the city of palm trees. Then they returned to Samaria. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. The epistle is from Galatians, chapter 3. 
To give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made, and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scriptures imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out day and night before you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Turning to the disciples, Jesus said privately, Blessed are the, are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, that I know of all things were made, who for us men, our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under conscious title. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to the judge of the living and kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead and the life of mercy and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A lot of well-meaning Christian artists often try to make the most terrifying portions of Scripture and then they try to make them cute. Nearly every child probably has a, a scene maybe a lamp or a picture, maybe their whole nursery decorated like Noah's Ark. And the animals going into the ark two by two, it's kind of odd to say the least, because remember that that ark had the animals going in it because God in his holy wrath was killing everything outside of the ark. And I imagine you don't see that depicted in that nursery. Then there's the angels, powerful beings created by God as his heavenly 
war, for heavenly war and for service to mankind. And in the scriptures, they always have to remind the people, do not be afraid. These two have been toned down, kind of cutesied up, made uh, acceptable for home decor. Some things you just can't cutesy up. I bet you've never seen a picture of Moses coming down from Mount Sinai with the stones of the Ten Commandments with a smile on his face. He's usually got a grimace on his face while the darkened sky around is heaving out thunder and lightning bolts on that mountain. You can't really cutesy up the Ten Commandments. There's no getting around them. The law says what the law says. And yet, men and women still try to look for their loopholes, their outs, their method by which they might be able to justify themselves. This is what this lawyer, the expert of the law, in the law, is trying to do with Jesus today in the gospel lesson. He wants to know how he can earn his salvation. Jesus responds that all he has to do is keep the whole law of God. Keep the law of God. How do you fare with that? Have you ever lied? Have you ever been disobedient and, and spiteful to your parents? You ever lusted? You ever spoken a word of hate? Ever gossiped? You ever desired what another person has? You ever used the Lord's name as a curse word? And surely you know that you and I and no human being being born according to nature, has kept the law. And yet still, haven't you felt that desire to kind of whittle down the law, to make it keepable, kind of dethang it, leave some room for your effort so that in some way you might say, I'm saved because I tried a little harder and did a little better than this person or that person. We all need to repent. There's no whittling down the law, no making it cute, cuddly. When the lawyer tries this by asking, who then is my neighbor? Kind of behind that is, do I really need to love and be kind to all people, even my enemies? Jesus responds with this famous parable of the Good Samaritan. And the answer is an unequivocal yes. The law really does mean what it says. You are to treat everyone with mercy. You are to love everyone as you love yourself. And who can live up to this? Who can go and do likewise as Jesus commands? And do it perfectly and never fall. If this is the way it is with the law of God, who then can be saved? And that's the right question. That's the question that this lawyer should have been asking. 
Instead of asking what he would have to do to be saved, he should have come to the Lord asking how on earth anybody could be saved. Since no man, including himself, can live up to the holiness of God. And if we come today with that question, if we've ever despaired of our own goodness, ever seen that core of darkness lurking in our own hearts, if we struggle with a sin that just will not budge, if we know that we are a sinner, then we need to hear the message meant for our ears today. The answer to the question, who then can be saved? For there once was a certain man who had it all. He lived in the holy city of God, the city of the temple of God, the city of peace, the city of Zion, this man, of course, represents Adam and all humankind before the fall into sin. But you know the story, and you also know your own heart. This man left Jerusalem, and he went down, down, down to Jericho, a cursed city a city destroyed in God's wrath with a curse laid upon it that it should never be rebuilt. This was the path that you and I and all mankind walked. The path from Jerusalem to Jericho, from original righteousness to original sin. The devil promised that this would be the primrose path. Eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Come into my kingdom, and you will be like God. But of course, that was a lie, just like everything else the devil says. And once we walked out of the safety of the walls of Jerusalem, once we had left God's kingdom, for sin, the devil attacked. He stole from us our birthright as a creation of God to life, and he beat us with sin and death and left us on the side of the road. And now, who shall help us? Shall the law? Shall the priest and the Levite with their Old Testament laws and sacrifices help us? In no way. They pass us by on the other side. For what can the law do for a dying man who has broken the law? What good does it do to come up to a man condemned to death for a crime and say, you know, you really shouldn't have done that. It's true, but it's no salvation. And it's all the law has to offer. Offer the coldest of cold comforting and comfort of reminding us that we are only getting what we deserve. But then a Samaritan the word means half-breed to the Jews. A Samaritan comes along. And he goes beyond what the law can do. He offers mercy and pity and kindness. He's called half-breed because he represents Jesus, the divine half-breed, fully God and fully man. And he binds up our wounds he pours into them the oil of the Spirit. 
who was lavished on us in our baptism. He pours on the wine which he makes to be his own blood which bought our forgiveness. And he gently picks us up and lays us on his own donkey. Because he himself will carry us and the burden of our sin on, his own, on, his, on himself, on his ride to his own death on Palm Sunday, likewise upon a coal, the foal of a donkey. And he carries us here to the end, the ark the church, the place where he sees to it that we are taken care of. And he promises to return. He promises to come back and heal us fully. He promises to come back and raise us from the dead. And he's already done it once. He's already raised us up off the road where the devil has left us, and he's given us new life in holy baptism and the forgiveness of our sins. We've already been dead, really dead, dead to sin. So now we've only got a, a little death to go through. Just one more hardship worthy of the name and even that for us has been made the doorway to rest and everlasting life. This good Samaritan will come back as he promised and finish this job of resurrecting us in soul and body for everlasting life. Because he is your neighbor your brother in the flesh who took upon himself your sin and bore it in his body on the cross and rose up from the dead for your salvation. He has now bound up your wounds, healed you, and given you life. So cling to this good Samaritan because he is Jesus Christ, your Savior and Redeemer. Cling to him. Have the wine of heaven, the blood of Christ, once more poured upon your wounds. And live. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's arise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the church throughout the world, and especially Zion, that we would not bypass those in need, but rather be filled with God's grace and love to care for all our neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Lord of the harvest to send forth workers into his vineyard, that through their service the world would know the compassion and care of Jesus Christ, the Good Samaritan. Let us pray to the Lord. For all pastors, especially Matthew Harrison, our synodical president, Brian Saunders, our district president, Michael Scudder, our circuit visitor, that they would be faithful in their preaching of the gospel and in their administration of the oil and wine of the Spirit, of the sacraments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
for those who are enemies of God and his people, that by the working of the word and spirit, their hearts would be softened and they would be given the gifts of repentance and faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For a good harvest, protection from drought and famine, be pleased to hear us and send us refreshing rain as you have this day. Deliverance from illness and fear and abundant provisions for all. Let us pray to the Lord. For all governments and those in authority, that they would justly and wisely use their position and power to promote the general welfare of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the sick and the suffering, and especially for Keith, Andy, Barb, Shirley, Vernon, Steve, Barry, Steve, Hazel, Jen, Pastor Darren Court, and Ron, that God would provide care and rest for them, and according to his will, a restoration to earthly health. And with all the victims of the wildfires and Hurricane Laura, that they may receive food and water and aid so they may recover from the devastation and find comfort through helping hands, the helping hands of others. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who receive the Lord's Supper this day, that by faith they would receive the eternal benefits of Christ's true body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. For the church triumphant and the church militant, that all who have received the inheritance of eternal life in Christ would be united forever in a holy communion and dwell in the promised land of the new heavens and new earth to come on the last day. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promise salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of his forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. Have mercy on us, Jesus Christ, and grant us peace, O oh, Lord, we pray. Amen.
Welcome to the altar of the Lord. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, strengthen and preserve you, both body and soul, to life everlasting. Amen. So now in his peace. Amen. O Lord, now let your servant depart in heavenly peace, for I have seen the glory of your redeeming grace, and light to be the Gentiles unto your own.
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Good morning to all of you. This week is our board meeting week, so please make note of the calendar on the back of your uh, insert in your bulletin. Also a reminder that today the Freedom Rock is to be dedicated downtown, and that ceremony is going to begin at 1 o'clock. Uh, I think the weather will probably clear up by then. But anyway, it'll be down there, and you're all invited to join in on that. Any other announcements that need to be made? Weekday school begins this Wednesday. Uh, all the children are to bring their own lunches, their own snacks, and also their own drink this week because we couldn't get the milk ordered this week. All right, anything else? May God richly bless each and every one of you.
Contents and views expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this cable company or its commission.